is an excellent lead-in. So, Mari. Yes, ma'am. Here I am. Where do I put the clicker? Oh, oh Lord, Lord in the heavens. We lost oh, the clicker. Lord. Where is the clicker? Oh, this is our worst nightmare, people. Oh, here it is. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> Just kidding. <clears throat> all right. Here's what we know. So, one of the things we know is that at last election season in Arizona, Oh, yes. I thought my voice was loud enough. Too. It's not true. No, no, yeah. no. Um, what we know is the last election season is that four out of ten registered voters in Arizona did not vote. We are doing a great job of actually registering folks to vote, but there's something missing to vote, getting folks to you get know, I don't know if vote. you know, but Green Valley votes I do a know huge talk. Yeah. Know. And right. this is definitely on average. Yeah. Right. Yeah, we're not we're not talking Arizona. So we we recognize there's something broken and we need to figure out a way to 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 fix that and, and encourage people to to vote. We also know that those who are in <laughs> office aren't listening to the majority of voters in Arizona. <laughs> So according to these polls that, that uh, were conducted by uh, the uh, Cronkite School and, and Morrison Institute and Arizona Republic, uh, these are the majority of folks, majority of Arizona folks actually hold these values that a majority of our lawmakers wow. don't seem to recognize. Wow. That's yeah. remarkable. Oh, wow. I think, let us read. Do you want to read a little more? Yeah. Sorry. Why don't you read a couple of them? Yeah. So, state funded full day kindergarten. That was one of the things we talked about, right? 77%. Uh, don't build a wall, 55%. Uh, don't, put, don't use public tax, state taxpayer dollars to fund private schools. Um, you know, uh, immigration reform, pathway to citizenship, 68%. Marriage equality, 69%. You look at these kinds of polls, it's like, well, wow, Arizona seems to be, you know, kind of a purpley place to live, right? And I think Leanne did a really good job of hitting on this, is that we know, I mean, this is a reason, one of the reasons why you guys are together and coming together and you have the work groups, is that after this last election, people needed to reach out to each other, and not, but not everyone has done that. And I think that's part of the reason why we're here today, is that we're trying to figure out a way to work together with groups like you to reach out to folks who are not engaged. You guys are engaged. You're right, most of Green Valley is engaged. But maybe not. Maybe there are more people that we can reach out to within our groups that don't belong to uh, the, the uh, alliance, you know, that can be further, that we can reach out to further. And there are individuals in our communities and in our families and in our neighborhoods that do have circles of influence who might not be associated with an organization. And there's a place for them as well. So we talk about dark money, because it comes up every election season, right? That there's a dark, an influence of dark money in Arizona. But we find that when we talk to folks who aren't as engaged, they have never heard of that term. They don't really understand what dark money is. And we explain, uh, we been explaining that to people uh, that you know dark money is money that comes from outside interests usually from uh, foundations or corporate corporate groups who uh, are spending money in our state to influence elections influence uh, propositions that are going on the ballot and uh, paying for ads those kinds of things and so there's that's dark money and I think the thing that we like to remind folks about is that those, those dollars don't have to be disclosed. You don't have, folks don't have to know where those donations come from, uh, thanks to Citizens United. And um, so those funds can, monies can come flooding through. We don't know who's trying to influence our elections or other political processes or our state legislature, because they don't have to be held accountable. They don't have to let us know that they're, they're donating those funds. And we're talking about a lot of money. Yeah. 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 A lot. So, uh, thank you, Leanne. I love how she's reminding me of my notes. You have a question, Matt? I, I do have, and this is, it's on the topic of dark money. There are really a lot of ferocious ads out against Proposition 204. Yes. Absolutely. Do you know who's behind that? 
Yeah, they actually, I mean, there's a campaign on what we would call progressive folks, maybe, who are against uh, 204 that have been laying, ac laying accusation against pro 204 folks that they're lying that this money, but there's an Eventbrite page out there, invite out there that was paid by a Koch Brothers or Koch uh, influenced or paid organization. So that must have come from somewhere, right? Yeah. Too. And, what we, and so what we see is that the, the um, amount of dark money that's influencing U.S. politics, pre-2012 was at about 5.2 million, and by 2014 had reached $300 million. And that was two years ago, three years ago. So what's it at now? So how is it used in Arizona? How do we see its influence? We see it through, you know, corporate goals, uh, 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 giving uh, uh, corporate tax loopholes in our state, uh, conflicts of interest. We see these. We're going to see this pretty soon, in terms of the privatization of schools and how education funds are spent, and then a divide and conquer, which is kind of, you know, we're we're hoping we can come in and say, look, maybe we need to stop this divide and conquer strategy and start thinking of our shared values and working together more, looking beyond some of these things uh, that they use to, to divide us. Right, and who gets to participate in the political process as well? So radical special interests in Arizona, how do they work? So education vouchers, I heard someone talk about education tax credits. You know, uh, we are last national education spending and now rank worst in the country. Teachers are leaving by the droves, right? Mm -hmm. And we just, pa our state legislature just passed a law to expand vouchers so that uh, those more money can go to private schools. And, um, you know, that's uh, just one of those uh, examples now of, uh, of uh, special interests at work in Arizona. Get the clicker. And then you know, we have an organization, Center for Arizona Policy. I don't know if you're familiar with them in, in Arizona, led by Kathy Herod. And you know, this is an organization. Remember the polls, the list we showed you guys before? Their influence in state legislative politics is so strong that look, they've been able to pass 156 laws. It's one of the only organizations in the state that I know of in which its executive director gets to stand on the legislative full floor the day that they open the state legislation, legislature. Wow. As a 501c3. Oh my gosh. They're not an official lobbying, lobbying group. They're, they're designated as a nonprofit organization. Mm -hmm. Holy cow. See this yes. lovely gentleman? Um, his name is Steve Yarbrough. He's uh, president of our state senate. And Steve is a great example of the lovely conflict of interest, conflicts of interest that we have in our state that we hope we can change. So he's president of the Arizona State Senate. He is a champion of education vouchers. And he's also the executive director of the Arizona Christian School Tuition Organization. <laughs> as, as, a, as the executive director of that organization, he gets paid 125000 a year. And on his line, 90. He is double dipping. He not only gets paid the, those that for being executive director, but uh, it's amazing. I love how, in a way, it's like good for you. In a way, you know, like he uh, he has a private org. There's a private company that his organization contracts with to do all the data entry and things like that. They had brought in uh, a lot. I think 2014 on the 990, 70, a little over 74 million dollars in tax credit tax, tuition tax credits. The organization, this private company that does all the work for them, he owns this company. In 2014, they made over $600,000. And he also owns the building that houses building, his, yes. his foundation. And they pay rent they to pay rent him. And they pay rent to him. <laughs> right? so. And you know, there have been attempts to bring an ethics uh, charge in some fashion. and. You know, majority of his uh, peers in the Senate and the in the House don't really have been. They haven't done anything. They don't want to do anything. 
So we know that there are familiar power brokers in our state that are part of this system. And this is just kind of an example of some of the folks that we're aware of. Maybe some of them aren't, are ones that you may not be aware of, but I'd like to show the slide to kind of give you an idea of what, what we're up against. Freedom Works is one that's gonna probably come up a lot with the 305, the Prop 305 campaign, in terms of them supporting it. I know they're uh, going to probably be doing a lot of ads and, and putting together a lot of language on the uh, uh, on the Prop 305 that's going to be about freedom and choice and things of that nature. Words, don't they? Focus oh, yeah. on the family. Oh, yeah. oh, and like the National the Right to Work right now is doing all that they can to um, to work against SEIU, a labor union as well. And um, you know, so yeah, there's a lot of old friends on this. You know on this list here. Oh, Betsy DeVos is one of them. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And, and we, you know, right now, I mean, I think that this is really appropriate given the, the last slide that we showed about school vouchers. Arizona, for the last 30 years, has really been the testing ground for all of this type of legislation. Sorry about that. That's okay. um, <clears throat> and now, Betsy DeVos is our Secretary of Education on the national level, and what is she trying to do? Vouchers. Trump wants to put twenty vouchers. million dollars into vouchers uh, through the federal system. But it started here, which is why being activated on the local level, we feel, is so critical. Who benefits from this? Here's some organizations in our state or companies that benefit from uh, the work that the folks are doing. So we see that the privatization of um, immigration. Um, those beds are pre-guaranteed, right? They're part of the contract, so regardless of the beds are empty, we, the, 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 they get paid. So what happens? Mass raids happen, and those beds are filled. Yeah. Can you right comment, now by children. Com, can you comment on the Freeport Mac Moran and on the Rosen communities in particular, please? So, I mean, this is a, I mean, there's lots of different issues around these ones. I mean, a lot of it has to do with Use of uh, use of private land. utility, public utilities, the use of water, the um, land grabbing that's happening, the resegregation that's occurring in our state as well, um, the development of, of subpar communities um, as far as construction is concerned. Um, so yeah, all of that. Yes, ma'am. And I just read that they're also privatizing foster care, the foster care system, oh, and they have that. had. The, similar to the prison system, they have had horrible results. Well, kids have died. We've seen this with the privatization of the mental health care system already, yeah. that there have been struggles in Arizona. The and we VA. have it gone they about that. The yeah. Yeah, yeah, they do. So, um, so, yeah, so we're wondering if there's any like aha moments that you had, or when you're listening to the dark money, if there's anything that you, um, that was stood out to you or that was surprising. Also, community. I live there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the same. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Bashes. Yeah. So yeah, Bashes. Uh, um, you know, uh, uh, kicked the union out of their grocery stores. They had a huge uh, union thing going on a few years ago, and they've uh, they've had. Um, they, you know, that was an example, one of those examples. You know, unions are really trying to stay, stay strong in the grocery stores. You know, a lot of, I know people who left other industries that, you know, they got laid off, but they were able to get a job at a local grocery store. And then under a union protection, it's, it's actually pretty, it'd be a nice place to work, you know, in terms of being able to um, get, a, get a good paycheck and, and, and health benefits but not if you kick the union out. Was there anything else that stood out to folks? Yes, ma'am. No, I have a question. If we go to your website, are those um, lists available? Not, not yet. Not currently. Not currently. We can work on that. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I assume what we're going, or hope what we're gonna then talk about is when you have the kind of power that these groups have because of the money, how do people like us get our message out to influence the voters? Well, that is a perfect segue. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. We'll be paying right. you our, our $5 at the end of this meeting. <laughs> so this is our 
our intervention. We've now seen, we've dreamt together, we've, we've listed some shared values, we've seen what we're up against. And this is uh, the YWCA's intervention. And what we hope that the Alliance can do is to work together and collaborate in meaningful ways to start to fight this. Because, so, oh, because, sorry. <laughs> go ahead. Mary. So, you know, special interests don't always win. And I think the SOS campaign against the voucher expansion bill is a good example of this. We've gotten to know the folks, they're a partner with us now in Operation Aboop. Amazing group of mostly women who are teachers, parents, and just concerned folks who support public education. We're like, holy cow. People said, oh, good luck. I, do you guys have funding? No. Do you guys you know, have any vouchers? We're just starting, we don't really have anything. You know, they, so they had no funding, they didn't, but they started out and, and they had enough folks, you know, made us realize that this is not, these kinds of issues are not red and blue, you know, and SOS was a great example. If you look at their success map of in different recorders offices and, and how they did well with their initiatives, you have up by county, I think it was like a 100%. And other counties across the state were in the 80 percentiles. They did really well. They beat special interests. They still have a ways to go, and the campaign's going to head off into its next thing. But this is an example right here that they don't have to win, and we don't have to feel un emboldened just because we don't have as deep pockets. And we don't have all the money, but we do have the people. Mm -hmm. And that's going to make all the difference. I never thought that's that going to make all the difference. Yeah. So Operation Abu yeah. is all about rebuilding community, reviving democracy, and co-creating a new Arizona in which everyone can thrive. So we're coming at this from a place of... Yeah, so um, our, our, our hope is that our organization, our association and affiliated collaborators are radically inclusive. We want to hear from everybody. Mm -hmm. It's values-based, as you saw when we are writing on the boards here of what our shared values are and what we're coming together um, and to see like, you know, no hunger, healthcare for all. You saw these repeated on these on these poster boards and that's what we're also seeing when we go around on our other, um, when we had our other community huddles. We're asking people to participate in the process that's supposed to be guaranteed by our constitution. So in that way, this is a, you, this is a nonpartisan and patriotic movement as well. It's positive and hopeful that we're coming together to really build change in this, um, in this, state and in this country to based on our shared values and we believe we're making a choice to believe that we can fix what is broken yep. and then ultimately that that process can be transformational can not I, just individually but also systemically can yes. i butt in really please quick. do i forgot you'd asked me so how are we going to pay for all this right and i think you know other than looking at the uh, voucher system and how that's corrupted and any use of tax dollars the other thing I forgot to mention, I just don't want to let this get away, is that we've got the, the, ta the corporate, corporate tax, tax loopholes that we have in this state are killing us right now. Yeah. You know, we've got, uh, we've got 2017 to 2018, they're expecting a shortfall based on these of $104 million. And uh, reduced state revenue by, if, since 2011, the corporate tax loopholes have reduced state revenue by 600 million a year. So, I mean, that's actually since 2014. So, you know, I mean, there's money. That's, 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 there's some money there, but we've got to get them to think differently in terms of corporate. And we have to prioritize what we feel is important, which means we have to participate in the process. And we have to hold the people that are elected accountable. Mm -hmm to those choices. And our strategy is very simple, and it's how women have always gotten things done. It's we get our friends together, we share stories of hopes and dreams, and we make things. Amen. <laughs> 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 <laughs>